I miss you, we miss you, and I can't wait until we're all back home together, 7556 Old Moon Road in Columbus, Georgia, for worship. And, and I have been so encouraged as, as you've been sharing pictures of you worshiping at home as families. Uh, I've been so encouraged by your commitment to, to love your neighbor. I've been so encouraged by your commitment to, to practice generosity. And I'll be honest with you, um, I've never pastored a church during a pandemic. Your elders and your deacons have never done so either. So please pray with us and pray for us. Pray specifically for wisdom and discernment. Because right now there's this balance of trying to, to, to reason the balance between soon and safe. Uh, courage and caution. And so... Uh, I want you to know that we're spending a lot of our time researching, consulting specifically with our leaders in the Georgia Baptist Mission Board, with other local pastors, what the CDC is recommending, what our local governor is recommending, uh, what even uh, the White House task force has laid out in this phase three phase plan of reopening. We're doing our best to, to read and to research and study. So uh, I want you to know a couple of things. We're not going to work to be first. And we're not going to be pressured by what others do because we recognize here at Calvary, we have some unique factors to consider. On our campus, we have uh, elder, elderly ladies and gentlemen who live 24-7, 365. We have a school that shares part of our campus. So all those factors really add nuances and layers that we've got to consider. And so really, there's, there's kind of two questions that may have two different answers. When can we and when should we? So uh, let, me, let me be clear of a couple things. We are not meeting online only because the government told us we can't. We're not, we're not surrendering to some government mandate. In fact, uh, we chose uh, to, to exercise Romans 13.1 and do our part to support our frontline workers, many of whom are part of our church family. So our decision to meet online was a, a willing individual decision based out of a commitment to be a good neighbor. Um, and when we began to meet, one of the things that we did, before even we met online exclusively, we decided as our elders and deacons, deacons that we would consider any external factors in making a decision and a significant, if you'll remember several weeks ago, I did a live stream down by the river and it was the governor's declared state of emergency that really influenced our desire to be a good neighbor and began to meet exclusively online. So given that was a key factor in our decision to meet online only, uh, as long as we're under this state of emergency, we're going to continue to meet online only. And after that is lifted, which right now is scheduled to be May the 13th, uh, then we'll prayerfully consider what it looks like to meet back on campus. So I humbly ask for your prayers and for your patience. But here's the deal. We're going to prioritize our people over our preference and over our programs. So uh, don't expect just a light switch to be flipped that we immediately go from meeting online only to meeting back like we have been doing every week. In fact, uh, we are right now discussing what a reopening plan looks like. And we're going to meet again tomorrow and kind of drill down to that, trying to develop those things specifics. And there, there are a lot more questions that we have just like you than we have answers that we're trying to consider as we develop this plan. Like, for example, uh, how many of us can safely meet in this room at one time? How many services do we need to hold in order to spread out our crowd? How do we protect our elderly of our church and those that are part of our church family with health conditions? How, how, does that our, how do our ministries on campus impact a wise and timely celebration on campus? Uh, how, do we, how and when do we introduce things like nursery and children's ministry and on-campus student ministry? Here's a big question we're even considering. What have we learned from this time that we desire to just make part of our new church world? So many questions. One, one question that I can't answer definitively now is this. Uh, we've learned so much by streaming live that we're going to continue to live stream from now on. Uh, so this entire season has felt like a, a day-by-day -day development, and it's probably going to continue to feel like a day-by-day -day development. So we're going to craft a plan 
that will also build in some flexibility uh, because we know some things will continue to change. So even when we make an announcement of our plan, just realize it's going to be flexible. And as things and recommendations shift, we'll flex there accordingly. So uh, it's important for you then to stay tuned to the newsletter, stay tuned to social media. Your life group is a great lifeline for communication. So we're going to be meeting online at least through the middle of May. Uh, Beyond that, we'll let you know as we decide that. So at least for several more weeks, we'll be meeting online only. But when we do reintroduce ourselves into physically meeting on campus, we're going to do it through a methodical phase and approach. Okay. And even when we do come back, it, it's just going to be different for a while. And that's okay. Our entire, if you've been to Publix or uh, any, any store in town, everything feels different for now. And that's out of an effort and a commitment to be a good neighbor. Here's what I know. God is faithful. We are his people and you are a blessing. So I hope you're encouraged. Continue to be bold in your proclamation of the gospel.